In this video, we are going to talk about the relationship between insulin and potassium and which one shifts where and when. I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to know about those insulin and potassium shifts for nursing school. Let's do it. Hey there friend, Christina here with nursingschoolofsuccess.com, helping you to raise your grades and have more free time in nursing school. Yes, it's totally possible. So if you're like me, you're struggling with fluid and electrolytes in nursing school, right? And specifically, I had a really difficult time with this concept of insulin and potassium and glucose and what happens to the potassium level when you give insulin and if there's too much glucose, will the potassium level increase or will it decrease or what's going on? <laughs> so we're going to put an end to all of that confusion right here. I'm going to break this all down super simple for you. So the first thing you need to understand is that there are two different places that fluids and electrolytes can be, and that is inside of the cell or the intracellular fluid or the ICF or outside of the cell called the extracellular fluid or the ECF. Normally potassium hangs out inside of the cell. Now I like to think of potassium as a little home body. It likes to hang out and stay all nice and cozy inside of the cell. So potassium hangs out in the ICF or the intracellular fluid. But when there's too much glucose outside of the cell in the extracellular fluid or the ECF, potassium gets a little curious. It wants to join the party that glucose is having. <laughs> so potassium then moves outside of the cell to see what all the fuss is about. So let's say you have a patient with hyperglycemia, meaning their blood sugar level is high. What do you think is going to happen with that potassium level? Will it increase or will it decrease? Don't worry, I'm just gonna wait here while you think about it. The potassium level will increase because potassium will have moved outside of the cell, which then raises the potassium level. The potassium isn't hiding away in the cell anymore. It's moved outside of the cell to go to the party that all that glucose is throwing. Now, when that party gets a little too out of control, there's too much glucose around and they're getting a little too rowdy, <laughs> the police need to get involved. And the police is insulin. So insulin comes and moves glucose into the cells where it belongs and the potassium like we said before potassium is a really big homebody it doesn't like to shake things up too much or cause a ruckus or anything it just came out of the cell to see what was going on and when glucose was having that big big party it just wanted to see what the fuss was about but now the insulin police is here it's going to go back into the its home into its cell so it doesn't get any into any trouble so so it's going to move back into the cell. So what is going to happen with the potassium level when insulin arrives? No rush. I'll just pause here while you think about it. If you said the potassium level was going to drop when insulin arrives, you are 100% correct, my friend. When insulin shows up, potassium moves back into the cell out of the ECF, causing the potassium level to drop. Now, why is this so important? Well, if you have a patient with hyperglycemia, like during diabetes or DKA, and you give them insulin, you need to be very careful with that potassium level. You need to monitor it as they're receiving insulin treatment because you don't want that potassium level to drop too low. That can be very, very dangerous. So you need to monitor their potassium level closely when you're giving insulin therapy along with monitoring, obviously, their glucose levels closely as well. Now, if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button, share it with your friends, and of course, don't forget to subscribe and click on the little bell so you never miss a video. Now, go become the nurse that God created only you to be, and I'll see you in the next video.